and welcome to News Tonight on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tina Jha. Let's get started with the headlines of the day. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to embark on two-day tour to Maldives and Sri Lanka tomorrow to hold bilateral talks with presidents of both countries and Prime Minister of Sri Lanka. Prime Minister Modi says visits indicate the importance of India's policy of neighbourhood first. Government reaches out to opposition ahead of parliament session. Parliamentary Affairs Minister Prahlad Joshi meets Congress Parliamentary Party Chief Sonia Gandhi, seeks her party's cooperation for smooth functioning of the upcoming session. In an unprecedented move, Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Jagan Mohan Reddy appoints five Deputy Chief Ministers 25 member cabinet to take oath tomorrow in Amravati. State cabinet to be reconstituted after a midterm review two and a half years later. RBI issues new NPA resolution norms. It says defaults need to be recognized within 30 days. Lenders to decide on resolution strategy during the review period. And delayed by a week, monsoon to heat Kerala tomorrow to arrive in northeast India by Monday. Rains to provide respite from intense heat wave in North India in the next few days. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will embark on a visit to Maldives and Sri Lanka from 8th June. This will be his first visit abroad since assuming office for a second term. In a pre-departure statement, the Prime Minister said his visit to the Maldives and Sri Lanka reflects the importance India attaches to its neighbourhood first policy and that it will further cement bilateral ties with the two maritime countries. The Prime Minister will first travel to the Maldives in his first bilateral visit after retaining power in the Lok Sabha polls. And from Maldives, he will go to Sri Lanka on Sunday. My colleague Akhilesh Suman reports. In the first foreign visit of his second term, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will visit Maldives and Sri Lanka on 8th and 9th of June. Ahead of his visit, Prime Minister Modi tweeted, saying the visits indicate the importance India attaches to the policy of neighbourhood first. Thanking Maldivian President Soli for inviting him, Prime Minister Modi said India views Maldives as a valued partner. He also expressed solidarity with the people of Sri Lanka who witnessed the horrific terror attacks on Easter Sunday. He said India fully supports Sri Lanka in its fight against terror. In the first leg, Prime Minister Modi will visit Maldives' capital, Mali, on 8th of June. There, he will hold summit-level meeting with Maldivian President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli. The two leaders are expected to discuss issues of mutual importance with terror and global warming high on agenda. Prime Minister Modi will also address Maldivian Parliament, known as People's Majlis, and also meet former President Mohamed Nasheed. He will also inaugurate a coastal surveillance radar system and a composite training centre for the Maldives' defence forces built with India's assistance. Delegation level talks, signing of agreements. There would also be uh, the joint inauguration by remote link of uh, the composite training facility of uh, Maldivian National Defence Forces as well as the coastal radar surveillance system which uh, India is implementing under an Indian grant. This will be followed by some key agreements uh, across several areas including uh, customs cooperation, connectivity issues like ferry service, some defense agreements, uh, some capacity building agreements. After that, uh, Prime Minister will address the newly constituted Majlis. After Maldives, Prime Minister Modi will reach Sri Lankan capital Colombo on Sunday. There, he will hold summit meeting with Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe and also hold talks with President Metripala Sirisena. The talks are expected to focus on combating terrorism and also developmental issues. 
The Prime Minister is also scheduled to address a gathering of Indians living in Sri Lanka. Have talks with President Sirisena, with Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. He will meet the leader of the opposition, Mahinda Rajapaksha, and he will also have meetings with the uh, with Mr. Sambandan, who heads the uh, the, uh, the TNA, the Tamil parties. Uh, and obviously, uh, although the visit will be short. Uh, there, there will be a review of the relationship and uh, identification of how we move ahead. During the visit, India is expected to sign key agreements both with Maldives and Sri Lanka to boost ties. Maldives as well as Sri Lanka are immensely important to India's strategic needs in the Indo-Pacific region. The economies of both these countries are also closely linked to India. There was a time when people used to say that China is trying to encircle India with rings of pulse of adversaries. But Prime Minister Nain Modi is trying to reverse it with creating rings of pulse of friends. Any country's security is not just dependent on securing its border, but also creating friendship with the neighboring countries. And that is why Prime Minister Nain Modi has chosen to come to Maldives and Sri Lanka in his first visit in the second train war. Akhilesh Soman for Raj Sabha Television with camera person DK Pandey in Maldives. Akhilesh, in fact, is joining us live on news tonight from the Maldivian uh, capital, Mali. Akhilesh, good evening. So since it's going to be Prime Minister Modi's first visit abroad of his second term, take us through the kind of preparations that are underway in Maldives right now for this state visit of the Prime Minister. Indeed, Tina, you know, this is very important to visit by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in his second term. And as you have said, that it is his first visit abroad after taking oath of power in India. You know that uh, what is more important? The more important to show the bonhomie uh, by Maldivian people, by Maldivian politicians, and also by Maldivian government. And that is why uh, Maldivian parliament had decided unanimously that Prime Minister Nain Modi should address the par uh, parliament. So the preparation is more important in political terms. And I think that uh, Maldives is politically prepared to welcome Prime Minister Nain Modi. And what uh, we are hoping that uh, President Sholi himself will go and receive Prime Minister at the airport. Other than that, there will be some welcome functions at the airport. And Prime Minister Nain Modi will reach here in the afternoon uh, and he will uh, spend some time in an island. Uh, living in an island in Maldives is very important. Otherwise, you will not understand what Maldives is all about. So Prime Minister has chosen to stay uh, in the night in an island of Maldives. Other than that, you know that uh, on roads there are flags of both India and Ma uh, Maldives. And uh, I hope that when Prime Minister Nand Modi comes here, there might be people gathered over roads to welcome him. What is more important also, that Prime Minister Nand Modi, when he will be addressing the parliament, it will be actually the prayer time in Maldives. So some people have raised, you know, questions that why, why uh, Prime Minister is speaking in the evening. But mm. given the fact that Prime Minister program is so tight and he could find this time only, so Maldivian parliament decided, Maldivian government decided uh, to welcome Prime Minister Nand Modi in the parliament in the evening. And you know that a speaker of parliament is a former president of Maldives, who is Mr. Nasid, and who had been very uh, confident uh, of... Uh, India and Indian government and Indian people and the new president is also you know uh, a person of confidence with India and he wants to uh, you know showcase the bonhomie between the two countries and I think uh, we will see it tomorrow uh, when Prime Minister Narendra Modi reaches here what mm. is the color in uh, Maldives about to welcome. Mm. Akhilesh, another cause of concern for India in recent years has been that we've seen how China has been making deep inroads both in Maldives as well as Sri Lanka. And relations subsequently with India plummeted over these years. So how is Prime Minister Modi's visit going to rebuild uh, India's partnership with both our strategic neighbours, uh, Sri Lanka and Maldives? You are right, Tina. That was a billion-dollar question earlier. But it is not that costly now. You can understand. The way China had, uh, you know, uh, put money... China came here and Sri Lanka both with deep pockets and now Sri Lanka is indebted under debt trap and Maldives also. 
So people of Maldives and people of uh, Sri Lanka and both the governments have realized that that way of development, that way of creating infrastructure in haste without going in the nitty gritty and without going in the future of how to repay will be dangerous. They will lose the sovereignty in coming days uh, if uh, they continue on that. And after this realization, I think uh, both the countries have realized that relationship with India is far more important and far more easier and no cost involved, no conditions involved, and they will be safe and secure. There was an uh, understanding in many of the countries there that uh, China is trying to make inroads in the two countries, and it may become a colonial power in this whole area. And uh, Prime Minister Nain Modi's initiative to go very close to these countries, not only Sri Lanka and Maldives, but also many countries in Indo-Pacific region, has now created a situation that when you can have, see a balance of power. And that is why I was telling that uh, security of a nation uh, like India does not only depend on how you secure your uh, geographical border. You need to secure your neighbors. You need to secure your uh, geography with friendly relationship with neighbor, uh, with extending help and assistance to those countries who need your help and assistance and specifically the needs of the people should be fulfilled so that people don't support any external power that may be colonial. And I think this is the strategy with his Prime Minister Nand Modi is working that create a ring of pearls of friends around us and this ring of pearls will create a situation when external forces will hesitate to come uh, with a colonial mindset and I think after this visit uh, there will be a clear message uh, all over the world that how India is trying to progress on relations with neighbor without any conditions, without any uh, pressure and expecting and uh, giving help to the people, mm. assisting people and the governments in a way that they can enable themselves. And that's why perhaps Akhilesh, an extension of friendship is that India is helping in training Maldivian cricket team as well, because since India, of course, is a country that loves cricket. Thank you very much, Akhilesh, for joining us and putting those uh, perspective, uh, putting things into perspective for us. We'll, of course, come back to you tomorrow when the Prime Minister arrives there in the Maldivian capital. Moving on in the bulletin now, External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar, who is on a two-day visit to Bhutan, met the country's top leadership on Friday. During his meeting with Bhutanese Prime Minister Lote Shering, discussions were held on important elements of the bilateral ties with emphasis on development partnership and cooperation in the hydropower sector. The External Affairs Minister also conveyed Prime Minister Narendra Modi's greetings during his talks with Prime Minister Sherry. Earlier, S. Jay Shankar held talks with his Bhutanese counterpart Tandi Dorji and also discussed issues of mutual interest. This is S. Jay Shankar's first overseas trip after assuming charge of the Ministry of External Affairs. And back home, Parliamentary Affairs Minister Prehlad Joshi on Friday met Congress Parliamentary Party Chief Sonia Gandhi in New Delhi. During the meeting, the Parliamentary Affairs Minister sought her party's cooperation for smooth functioning of the Parliament session that begins 17th of June. Prehlad Joshi was accompanied by Union Ministers Narendra Singh Tomar and Arjun Ram Meghwal. The meeting is part of the government's exercise to reach out to the opposition parties. Earlier, the Parliamentary Affairs Minister also met leader of the opposition in the Rajya Sabha, Ghulam Nabi Azad, and DMK's leader of house in the Lok Sabha, T.R. Balu. The Parliament session, the first of the 17th Lok Sabha, will go on till 26 July, and the budget will be tabled on the 5th of July. Besides presentation of the budget, the government is planning to convert into law 10 new ordinances, including the one to ban the practice of instant triple talaq. Congress President Rahul Gandhi arrived in Kerala for a three-day visit to thank the people of the state and uh, also his constituency, Wainar, for electing him to parliament. The Congress President held a road show in Ka Kalikavu town in Malapuram district of Kerala. He has scheduled over 15 public gatherings over the next three days. This is the Congress President's first visit to his constituency after the Lok Sabha election. My response is that I, my door is going to be open to every single 
individual, every single citizen of Vayanar. My job is to listen to the people of Vayanar and speak with the voice of the people of Vayanar. West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee on Friday wrote to Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressing her inability to attend the Niti Aayog meeting on the 15th of June. In the letter, she said the formation of Niti Aayog was unilaterally announced without any discussion with the Chief Ministers. She said Niti Aayog has no financial powers to support state plans. Earlier as well, Banerjee had skipped meetings of the policy think tank and creation of a new structure. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is set to chair the fifth meeting of the Niti Aayog's Governing Council on the 15th of June. Time for a short break here, but news and updates will continue on the other side. Do stay with us. Today we'll take a closer look at the draft National Education Policy 2019. The approaches has been one of looking at education in a continuum rather than looking at education into various subsectors by which it stands. The government is the funder of education. It's also the operator of education, it produces education, it actually arranges the resources and actually provides education. So it's funder, it's a producer, it's assessor, and it's also the regulator. Now, when these things are conflated together, these different functions, it does not run well. So I think that the policy has taken a really good step to right. separate out these some of these functions. Kothari Commission was advocating that the people, uh, students of North should study one language from South and the Southern state should learn the Northern languages, including Hindi, because Hindi is widely spoken language. How do you plan to build consensus on this draft? We would like a policy which is finally being adopted, which actually voices the views of every single stakeholder in this country. Welcome back, you're watching News Tonight. The Reserve Bank of India issued a new framework for resolution of bad loans on Friday. So as per the new guidelines, the RBI has offered a 30-day gap for stress recognition instead of the one-day default earlier. The new norms replace all the previous resolution plans. On the 2nd of April, the Supreme Court had struck down the stringent RBI circular issued on 12 February 2018 for resolving bad loans. Under the previous norms, a company could be labelled an NPA if it missed repayment for a day. But the new circular provides for a framework for early recognition, reporting and time-bound resolution of bad loans. During this review period of 30 days, lenders may decide on the resolution strategy, including the nature of the resolution plan, as well as the approach for implementation. The central bank said the new directions will come into force with immediate effect. The new government in Andhra Pradesh will have a record number of five deputy chief ministers. Andhra Chief Minister Y.S. Jagan Mohan Reddy said in a meeting of YSR Legislature Party that he would have five deputies and a full 25-member cabinet. He also told his legislators that the cabinet would predominantly comprise members from the weaker sections of society. The deputy chief ministers will represent scheduled castes, scheduled tribes, backward classes, minorities and the Kapu communities. He also told his legislators that the cabinet would predominantly comprise of members from the previous sections. Jagan Mohan Reddy also said the cabinet would be reconstituted two and a half years later after a mid-term review of the government's performance. The new council of ministers will be sworn in at a public function in Amravati tomorrow. The Sikkim Krantikari Morcha government will soon clear the decks for the Central Bureau of Investigation to take up corruption cases in the state. A notification issued by the erstwhile Sikkim Democratic Front government in 2010 had mandated the CBI to seek its prior consent before taking up an investigation against any of its officers or public representatives. The SKM had moved a red petition in the High Court for quashing the notification, but it was dismissed. Section 6 of the DSPE Act prohibits the agency from investigating cases outside Delhi and Union territories without permission from the respective state governments. 
The newly formed SKM government has been searching for files related to malpractices by the previous government headed by Pawan Kumar Chamli. The SKM had pledged to bring the CBI to Sikkim in its election manifesto. Union Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan has urged the people to adopt healthy and balanced food habits. Addressing an event organized by the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India on the first ever World Food Safety Day in New Delhi, Harshwardhan stressed on the need to check the food waste in the country. Representatives from central as well as state governments, food businesses, higher education institutes and NGOs joined hands in propagating the message of safe food habits. Dr. Harshwardhan unveiled a statue of Mahatma Gandhi on a bicycle, which symbolizes Swachh Bharat Yatra. The first ever World Food Safety Day adopted by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations is aimed at creating awareness among people about food safety. The theme for this year is food safety, everyone's business. An estimated 600 million cases of foodborne diseases occur annually across the world. If you eat less, you live longer. I think that this message, if we can reach their interest, and if we can eat less, 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 and if we can institutionalize it, and if we can reach it in the right place, I am very happy that the FSSAI is also doing this in this direction. But their intention, their intention, their intention, their intention, their intention, अगर वास्तव में हमें जन आंदोलन बनाएंगे तभी उनके प्रयासों का देश को फायदा होगा और जन आंदोलन बनाने के लिए देश के सभी लोगों को आगे आना पड़ेगा हमें विश्वास है कि महल और झोपड़ी में रहने वाले गरीब या जिस प्रकार के ऐसे लोग हैं हमारी सरकार ने ये ठान रखा है कि हम उसे पौष्टिक आहार भी प्रदान करेंगे और शुद्ध आहार हमारी सरकार ने जो न्यूट्रिशन के लिए पौष्टिक आहार प्रदान करने के लिए जो एक संकल्प लिया है हम जन जन तक गरीबों को झोपड़ी में रहने वाले ऐसे तमाम लोगों को हम पौष्टिक आहार प्रदान करने के लिए समर्थ होंगे जस्टिस धीरू भाई नारायण भाई पटेल वॉज स्वॉन इन एज द चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ द डेली हाई कोर्ट ऑन फ्राइडे लेफ्टिनेंट गवर्नर अनिल बैजल एडमिनिस्टर दी ऑथ ऑफ ऑफिस टू जस्टिस पटेल एट अ फंक्शन हेल्ड एट राज निवास इन डेली Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal, his deputy Manish Sisodia and cabinet colleagues along with senior members of the judiciary, officers of the Delhi government and other officials were present at the ceremony. Justice Patel was earlier posted at the Jharkhand High Court. The Supreme Court Collegium had recommended his name for the appointment as Chief Justice of the Delhi High Court. A Delhi court on Friday granted bail to three Ahmadi party leaders and also directed Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal to appear before it on the 16th of July. Bail was granted in the defamation case filed against them by the BJP in connection with the deletion of voters' names from the electoral list. AAP leaders Sushil Gupta, Manoj Kumar and Atishi, who appeared before the court, were granted bail by the court on a personal bond of 10,000 rupees each. Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal, who failed to appear before the court on Friday, has been summoned on the 16th of July. Former Commissioner of Police Kolkata Rajiv Kumar appeared before the CBI court for hearing in the Sharda Chit Fund scam case on Friday. The investigating agency had earlier demanded custodial interrogation of Kumar before the Supreme Court and had served him several notices for allegedly suppressing facts in the Sharada scam case. On 30th May, the Calcutta High Court granted him conditional protection from arrest for a month, and thus the CBI cannot arrest him till the 30th of June. But he has to be available for questioning if required. The next hearing in the matter will be on the 12th of June. Heat wave conditions are likely to continue in north and central parts of India until next week. 
The Met Department has predicted a severe heat wave in Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan and Vidharbha in Maharashtra from Saturday until Tuesday. There is a likelihood of similar temperature to continue, especially after the subdued rainfall over major parts of the country. Severity of the heat wave over eastern India is also expected to rise. The region in North India and Central India have been witnessing intense heat with the mercury soaring over 50 degrees in some places of Rajasthan. However, parts of South, East and Northeast India are expected to get some relief from the blistering heat with the onset of monsoon expected to take place over Kerala on Saturday. The Med Department has also declared a series of orange and yellow alerts for different parts of Kerala for Saturday, Sunday and Monday indicating the possibility of heavy to very heavy rainfall ahead of the monsoon onset. Monsoon is our hope that it will be onset in Kerala, in South Kerala. In June, it will be advanced in 10 days to the sluggish advance. और लेकिन कल जैसे साउथ केरला का एडवांस हो जाएगा उसके बाद धीरे थोड़ा साउथ पेनिनसुला और केरला का नॉर्थन पार्ट्स और कर्नाटक का सतन पार्ट्स तक पहुंच सकता है। And that's it from us in this news bulletin. We leave you with the graphics of weather conditions prevailing across all major cities in the country. Thank you for your time.